a severe, like we covered in the last episode, how easy it is to hate Horn. And nothing's going to change about that. Uh, we kind of talked, we, we jumped ahead a little bit because of rewatching it. I realized it's actually in this episode that he talks to the FBI agent and the U S marshal. Uh, mm-hmm. And it comes out that he has the, the faux uh, Navy seal tattoos and everything as a civilian, which again, bold strategy, cotton. Let's see how it plays yeah. out for him. Um, and that in this in this episode, we see how hard he underestimates and misunderstands Tedesco and his motivations and what makes him tick. Who's, uh, who's, the, who's the, the scientist, the little mousy scientist guy? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's just this, this ludicrous over confidence on Horn's part that because I am dominant, Tedesco will do what I want him to do until he's faced with the fact that he isn't and they end up with a catastrophe. Yeah. They, they, the, the archetype that Horn portrays is well executed and the writers and the actor did a good job of crafting this character whom you hate and everything he does simply reinforces that feeling, which kind of makes the viewer feel good. I hate him and I'm right for hating him. And I'm, I'm really hoping he gets his. So it, it was ably done, I, and I appreciated that. And for the people in the back who had the cheap seats and couldn't quite get what the point was, that interaction between the, the Phoebe and the Marshal and Horn, she calls out explicitly, hey, look, look so-and-so, you oughtn't be wearing that. And I'm pretty sure uh, you know it, I know it, and everybody who matters knows it. And that tells me more about you than you think it does. And that, that was really yeah. well done. Yeah. Yeah. Seen, like because like there's in the in inside the military there are kind of concentric circles of cool you know <laughs> so to speak like if you're an astronaut you're in the tightest circle you know like it's, it's that simple you're like you know like okay you're an astronaut uh and then there's it gets fuzzier and it's not you know there's no it's not encoded by any means but you know like guys like mike or special operations they went through a harder selection course than most of us and they get they get a little more street cred and deservedly so but one of the things that gets you labeled as a douche so quickly is claiming things you don't have a right to you know like and that that like i'm wondering if that was communicated adequately to someone who doesn't have a military background yeah what do you think sam yeah i mean I, I that see that didn't like land with me as much as just the fact that he's a, just a dick. He's a douche. He's easy to hate. He's almost too much of a villain. And I said like about most of the people in the show who are villains, they're a little too easy to hate. Maybe one of the villains, maybe two of the villains or villains aren't, you know, but uh, and they're a little more sympathetic. But everybody else, you're like when Reese kills them, it's like good. Fuck those guys. This is good, <laughs> you know. But like the, the like the military stuff, like it didn't really, like it didn't really land with me as much, obviously, as a civilian. But uh, yeah, I mean, and Horn, you know, gets what's coming to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> as and, we get to that. And Mike, correct me. I want your opinion on this too. For but for me, like, there's nothing. I don't hold like a, a quartermaster officer or you know any like anybody who was in a support branch in the military. I don't hold them in contempt. I really don't, you know, and likewise, I don't think special operators hold the rest of the military in contempt. It's just the, when you try to portray yourself as something you're not, that's what generates contempt. So I'll tell you the, the more, the shorter the interval between event a and your successful winning of your spurs, however you choose to define that, you know, passing SCT and getting your trident, the shorter that interval, the more likely you are to respond perhaps uh, less positively to that kind of interaction. Uh, I had my own moment where I had just gotten my trident and uh, I decided to go to um, what was then the, the legendary Naval Air Station Miramar Wednesday Officers Night, Officers Club Night, where all the, all now, the ladies show up and all the pilots are there. Let me and break in. Miramar is where Top Gun used to be, the Naval Fighter yeah. Weapons School. It's now so in that, Fallon. That, the the scene in the first Top Gun, the, the scene in the first Top Gun where they sing um, 
Um, you never close you your eyes like this. That love and feeling. Go ahead. <laughs> so that bar is a real place, or used to be a real place. And every Wednesday night, it was ladies' night. Ladies get in free and drink effectively free. So there were a lot of ladies there. And 22-year-old Mike Massa went there with a brand new Trident. Uh, and I ran into a pilot who was wearing a Trident. And I went, well, that's that's peculiar. I, you know, I, who were you? And so you that's asked That's an unusual questions. career like, path, to say the least. Yeah, like, how'd you do that? And he, he immediately got really wiggly and squiggly and uncomfortable. And uh, part of the conversation, so I followed him in the head and, and took his Trident away. So <laughs> I'm... Looking back, I'm not particularly proud of that. But at the time, I was super, super smug and self-righteous about it because mm -hmm. 22 years old, just got his trident, you know, yada, yada, yada. So the younger and super you are, the more you're full of that bullshit. Uh, yeah. Guys that have – and I, and at that point, I never even deployed. Yeah. Uh, directly, directly, you're exposed to more serious business in life. That becomes a lot less important. And the first time you have, you know, pick the combat service support function, whether it's logistics or medical or any damn person that helps you when you need it, you're like, that's actually goddamn handy. I'm sure glad we have those people. So that arrogance is rapidly tempered and bleached out of you. But a brand new frogman, oh, God, ego. I, there's not enough room in my house to house that ego that I had. <laughs> yeah, no, so, I, I hear you. And like, I completely agree. It's like, you don't operate long before you realize mm -hmm. it's all one big machine and remove any cog and it, it ceases to function, you know, and yeah. with some exceptions, there, there are some things that are probably superfluous. And, and um, within, I want to, I want to briefly comment on your theory or your metaphor of the concentric circles of cool, how astronauts are in the middle. I would argue that if you're a SEAL astronaut, Harvard trained surgeon, you might be actually the, the, the pixel in the middle of the concentric circle of pool. Like looking uh, at you, Kim. Kim. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Commander Kim. Who, by the way, is also getting his wings. I don't know if we mentioned that. He's now oh. he's about to finish, or maybe by this point has finished the uh, the NASA pilot training to be actually yeah, so, be a pilot pilot. So I'll, I'll put a link. Cool yet. Yeah, I'll put a link to that guy in the comments. But Sam, just for your for your fund of information, is, is it Johnny Kim? Is his name? Yeah, I John think? Kim. John Kim. He is no shit. And correct me if I, correct me if I, I misstate this, Mike. He is a Navy SEAL, Silver Star recipient, which Silver Star Combat is the third is highest deep. award for yeah. valor. Silver Star recipient, Harvard educated doctor, lawyer, astronaut, like. <laughs> Okay. Like all at the same time, and I'm like, "Good lord, <laughs> like, did, save did, some did, for the rest of us, buddy." I don't, I don't, I don't think he actually passed the bar though. I think he just, he just got the pre law. Did he get the law degree, or did he get? He has a medical degree and he's a doctor. I know that. Yeah, it, it's been a while since I looked. I just saw an article on him a few months ago, and I was like, "Wow, you know, uh, I bet that guy does, has no time to watch Netflix." <laughs> I, I'm guessing he doesn't find himself playing a lot of video games. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, there are dudes like,